Hi everyone, I'm John with Redenso, and today I want to talk a little bit about software-defined radios, what they do, and then specifically compare a $1,000 software-defined radio with the software-defined radio inside of Thea. This is actually our finished production-ready uh, digitizer board, as we call it, version 2.0. So software-defined radio is a term that you've heard me throw around a lot, whether it's on these other videos or on Artiform, but I don't think I've done as good of a job as I could have explaining why they're so powerful. So to illustrate that, I've actually got right here uh, the world's most sensitive radar detector. And the cool thing about this is that it's also an incredibly sensitive satellite radio receiver. It's an incredibly powerful Wi-Fi receiver or transmitter. Um, it is a FM radio um, receiver. It's whatever you want it to be, and the only thing you gotta do is change this antenna right here. Let me explain. Um, in the old days, when you designed maybe a radio station receiver, like an FM radio receiver, you had to design the hardware specifically to do that. And once it was done, it couldn't change. Over time, as processing power got cheaper and more widely available, I mean, the laptops nowadays, quad-core laptop is a thousand times more powerful than what we had 30 years ago. Um, we started to realize that we could simulate a lot of those analog electronics and functions in software. So this, this guy right here is actually the software-defined radio that we use in a lot of the development for Thea. It's an Edis B200 Mini. And the way that the signal chain works is you have our radar antenna here, an LNA that I wired in, and then this black box is a mixer. Um, in other videos, you've heard me say how all radar receivers tend to take that high frequency KA band and mix it down into a lower frequency that's easier to analyze. So that's the function of the RF front end here. So that sends out a lower frequency signal, let's just say a one gigahertz signal, into the software-defined radio. Software-defined radio doesn't really care what information is in that one gigahertz signal, or I should say what it originated from, right? Um, it can do the job of turning it into a digital signal and demodulating it or extracting the original information just fine. Um, and then it sends it over USB, sends those ones and zeros to the computer where you can do whatever you want with that data, whether it's make a recording and post it on RD form or tell your user interface to beep an alert because there's a police officer up ahead. <coughs> so it's pretty wild that just by running a different program on the computer, and by changing uh, the antenna on a software-defined radio, you can do whatever you want. You can literally have any type of, of receiver in the world, and you can also vary your processing power. I mean, think of the kind of crazy digital signal processing you could do if you hooked this up to a 64-core computer with 10 video cards or Amazon Web Services data center. Uh, Conversely, if you hook it up to something not very powerful, then you lose that ability. So flexibility is really the key with software-defined radios. And with Thea, we took that exact same concept and built it into something that can live on your dashboard. So I kind of think of Thea as three modules. You have the front end, you have our digitizer, and this, to be clear, this is the software-defined radio. And then you have the computer, which is just like the MacBook. Inside our front end lives the antenna, just like this antenna. We have an LNA that we built into the circuit board inside here. And then we also have a mixer, just like this black box takes that high frequency and turns it into a lower one. We've built that specifically for Thea into here. So what comes out of here is an intermediate frequency, just pretend it's one gigahertz, and it comes into the software-defined radio. This is where the FPGA and the analog to digital converter live. Turns it into ones and zeros, does all kinds of crazy DSP, and then sends it over to the computer, where, just like um, in this setup, we can do whatever we want with that information coming. We can alert users, we can stream it over the internet, we can, I mean, if you write a program, you have access to that information. It, the possibilities are infinite. So it's a really cool concept for a radar detector architecture, and it's really unique. It's never been done before. Um, but concept is just one thing. I mean, there's been a lot of great ideas, but if you don't execute it properly, that doesn't mean anything. And that kind of leads to what I wanted to do next, which is to compare 
the insides of a thousand dollar scientific grade software defined radio to the software defined radio that our engineers built. Uh, there's been only two of our engineers that worked on this and it only took them one revision to do a production ready circuit. And this right here is done, it's working. So, this is the second Edis I have. I took it out of the shell just so you guys could see better. What's amazing to me is similarities. Even if you don't know much about electronics, there's stuff that you can see immediately on here. Um, the first one is they both have a connector where the IF, or that down converted frequency, can come in. Um, on the Edis, it's this middle one right here. And it's actually a screw-on connector. So this horn could screw right onto here to, to get in the signal. Or rather, the mixer could screw right into there to get on the signal. And, and here we have two options. The first one, which is specifically designed for Thea, is this multi-pin connector right here. Um, and this is just because it's, it's a more durable, nice snap fit. It, it's better for a mechanical device. But we said, what about hackers? What about people that don't just want to use this as a radar detector? What about people that want to use this as a standalone software-defined radio? Um, we actually built a second input, and it's this guy right here. This is a standard type RF connector where you could put whatever signal you want into this digitizer for, eventual, for whatever use you want eventually. Um, th this is not enabled at launch because you can't have two of them enabled at once, but all that you have to do is solder a zero ohm resistor uh, to bridge that and it, it'll enable it. So it's a very easy thing that a lot of DIYers would be familiar with. So once the signal comes in, um, it has to be converted into ones and zeros. And both of these have an analog to digital converter chip. Now, one thing to note is that on this Edis, they chose to go with, with not a standalone ADC, but one that's built in to a chip that has a lot of other functions as well. Now that makes sense for them. Uh, this chip that they chose is a $200 chip in quantities of one, just this little guy. And since they weren't sure what applications and frequency ranges people were really interested in, they had to kind of do something that could handle a super wide range. Um, their ADC is a 12-bit ADC, which is very good. It's better than any other radar detector in existence. But we didn't have quite the same limitations because we knew narrowly what we were building for. So we were able to spend a little bit more money on a purpose-built 14-bit ADC. So that's, that's kind of the first key spec that I, I want you guys to remember. We have a $1,000 software-defined radio, but the ADC and Thea's software-defined radio is actually a higher bit and higher sample rate ADC. Pretty cool stuff. The, just if you forget about the rest of the system design, Thea's ADC will perform better than one dedicated SDR. Um, the next thing to look at is probably the most visually obvious, is that there is a giant, giant chip on both of these that says Spartan on it. And that's the FPGA. Um, you've seen my other videos about FPGA, so I won't get too in-depth there. But both of these are incredibly powerful FPGAs. And the one in here is more powerful than the one in Thea. Um, this FPGA is, again, it's, I think it's like a $150 or $200 part standalone. Thea is a $65 standalone, so it's expensive, um, but not quite as expensive. And the reason is because they, they have more, uh, this is just a bigger FPGA. Um, you can do more DSP, you can fit more logic in here than you can in the one in Thea. But in comparison, the one in Thea is twice as big as the one, more than twice as big as the one in the Escort Max 360. Um, and I think it's like, I want to say five or six times as big as the one, actually it might be 10 times as big as the one, the Valentine. I don't remember if the Valentine's is a five 5K or a 10K logic gate, um, but we have 50,000 logic cells. Now ours is a higher speed grade than the one used in here. That doesn't matter a ton, um, but this is a little bit more of an efficient architecture. It's a Spartan 7 in sp instead of a Spartan 6. So it's kind of a trade-off. We're not as big, but we're more efficient and we're faster in some ways. And then the final thing to look at on here is they both have USB controllers. Um, this one right here is a full USB 3 controller, whereas we use an FTDI uh, USB 2 controller. We don't need USB 3 internally. Um, with 
with the kind of signal processing that we're doing on the DSP, um, we can fit, USB 2 is more than enough bandwidth um, for internal use. And that is the backbone that we're using to ship samples around uh, the, the detector. And uh, it's kind of crazy. I mean, this SDR right here, the, the performance that we're seeing out of it is insane. Um, it's so, so clean, and there's so little noise. And I'm pretty impressed that my engineers were able to knock it out as quick as they did um, and with only one revision. So yeah, I just thought it would be a little quick, interesting video. Um, as I said, not a ton going on over the last couple of weeks with lockdown, but things are starting to move more. We, as I said, we just got this in a while back. So I thought I'd take it out and do a quick little video and show you guys what's going on. And I think we're getting very, very close to some, uh, to some, some other testing and results that you guys want to see. So hang tight. Subscribe to our channel if you guys are wanting to hear more about this. And uh, hope to have more for you soon. Stay safe, everyone.